ready. Okay. Uh, here we go. So um, again, we're going to create just a new file, um, ActionScript 3.0. So we'll be using ActionScript um, for the course. Um, and so uh, again, our timeline uh, down here, uh, very simply just double clicking that layer one and renaming this to background. And the first thing I want to go over is um, how we're going to do uh, just a simple mask, okay? So um, a simple mask, I'm dragging this object into the uh, interface here. Um, this is my background layer. So I'm going to modify, uh, transform, and free transform. So once I free transform this, I'm gonna drag this little center point up to the corner because that becomes then my point of reference of where I can scale it. Um, otherwise, uh, it would have just started to um, scale into the center. So I wanted to keep it, uh, make it easier for me to adjust it and center it in the frame. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is actually control click, um, and then I'm going to convert this to a symbol. And so again, this is just the habit that I go through on every object, essentially, that I bring into, um, into the uh, document uh, here, is I always convert everything to a symbol, okay? So um, um, the reason why, again, is because when we convert something to a symbol, um, in, in this case, a movie clip symbol, typically, always it's going to be a movie clip symbol for the most part. But when we do that, that's going to enable us to... Um, uh, uh, actually animate this using classic uh, the classic tween okay so increase or decrease the size of it move it from one place to another um, everything other than a shape tween uh, um, everything other than like a, a shape yeah a shape tween animation uh, will be um, will be able to be done with the movie clip symbol so at this point I'm just um, I created a mask layer here I just called it mask. It doesn't make it a mask just because I called it that, but I'm calling it that um, just uh, to make it easy for me. And I just drew a shape on here. So I double click that shape again to uh, select it and I'm, I'm going to convert this to a symbol. Um, why? Because um, I am going to uh, create a, cl a classic tween to where it starts from a, a small point and then it's going to grow to a large point. So this mask is going to actually reveal this background image, like almost like a spotlight, okay? So um, I will uh, double click that and then control click this, and then I'm gonna again convert to symbol, and it's gonna be a movie clip symbol, and you can just kind of name it um, and what have you. So I'm gonna name it mask, I'm gonna move it to the center, um, and then that is going to be the start of my mask animation. Then at this point, I'm going to go to like frame 30, and then the end of my uh, animation, I'm going to insert a keyframe, and I'm going to say, at the end of this animation, I want this object to do something else. So at this point in the animation, I want my background, or I'm sorry, I want my um, mask to actually expand. So I'm going to take my free transform tool, and then as, as you see my anchor points in the center, I'm going to expand it just like so. And then now you can see 1 through 29, I'm going to have one small shape, and then 30, it's going to kind of blow up huge. All right. So um, next final step, really, is I'm going to click the area between these two keyframes of my timeline, and then hit Control, and then click again. And then I'm going to create the classic tween. And then now, as I scrub back and forth, I have my animation uh, all set. So I just define the beginning and the end, and then I create the classic tween, and animate will fill in all of the um, uh, frames in between for me, okay, like using that tween. The only other piece then is what is this masking? Is the background is gone? I have to actually see that my background is on frame one, and I have to just extend that artwork all the way to frame 30 so it's visible throughout this um, uh, length of the timeline. Um, I don't want the background to actually move or any change in the art. It's just going to be a constant, um, uh, constant static image. So I'll control click frame 30 and then actually insert frame rather than keyframe. 
If I were to insert a keyframe, that would mean that the artwork would change. What I want to do is not have it change at all. I just want it to be static. So I'll insert a frame, and you can see that it has this little square image here. And so this artwork is just saying in the timeline symbolically that the artwork is constant here. It's not changing. Symbolically here, we have a, a, a dot and a dot here, and that's meaning that the artwork here is different than the artwork here, which in fact it is. It's larger here and it's smaller here, and we just have them linked by a tween. Classic tween, okay? Uh, finally, um, very simply, all you're going to really have to do is uh, click on the mask layer, uh, control click, and then hit this mask button. So that's indenting the background layer, and then if I hit return, you can see that it's, that it's, that's how my mask is working, okay? So if I were to want to add more content to the mask, um, oh, you know what, let me do one thing. Let me show the easing, okay? So like, let's say we wanted the, this mask to ease, right? So like, let's say it eases in towards the end. So it like goes really fast in the beginning and slows down at the end. So I'm gonna click this, um, this tween here and you can treat the mask the same as any other and you can um, uh, uh, classic tween here. Um, so in the properties palette, I'll go um, to bring this classic ease uh, number down to negative 100. So now it's going to ease in. So you see this little in here. It's basically just saying it's a classic ease in. So it's kind of slower in the beginning. It's easing in, and then it's and then it's uh, it's getting faster. Actually, probably wanted to ease out because I wanted it to slower at the end. So ease out. There we go. So I just bring it to the other side. So now it's slowing down towards the end. So it's less kind of. Um, it's got a little more something to it that that helps make it a little more natural. Um, okay. So that's that's essentially that. Let me go ahead. Um, go over one of the things that you'll probably want to really um, uh, use frequently as you're doing this. So I, I have been clicking on the enter key or the return button on my keyboard to like play this thing out throughout the timeline. I can stop the um, timeline by you know repeatedly hitting enter and so on and so forth. So um, in order to really test this thing out you can go to control test and then you can actually get this SWF file that's generated, and then you can see what the end result is going to be. So the end result here, again, is a looping video for infinity. It's not uh, going to stop. Um, and then that's just the nature of the beast of, of how um, uh, Animate is going to create files, okay? So um, I will show you how you can stop that, but essentially, um, right now, I wanted to show you uh, how to test it very quickly and easily under control test. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is, uh, is a, uh, a type. Okay, so um, I'm going to create type and I'm going to make it um, out of a button symbol. So I didn't show you button symbols last time, but they're very slightly different from uh, movie clip symbols. So. Um, a button symbol and a movie clip symbol, a button symbol can um, be any object as well, okay? So it could be like an image, it could be like a shape, it could be like a, a type, it could be just like regular type. Um, so I'm going to uh, actually select my type tool here, and I'm going, and it's right off to the side here, of course, um, and I'm going to just type flower, okay? Um, and so I'm going to select that type, and you can see it's live type. Course. And, and I can, you know, if I clicked off of it and then clicked back into it, I could change it up if I wanted to as well. So um, it's still live type and it'll always be that way um, until I change it to a symbol. Uh, so um, let me get it back into live type here and go up to the properties palette. And here you can see again, like the properties palette is always going to change depending on what kind of tool you have selected, what kind of objects you're um, selecting on. Uh, um, what kind of objects you have selected on this the canvas here? Um, so uh, under here, you know all of your typical um, uh, type properties. Okay, um, change type to whatever typefaces you have loaded onto your machine. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. I want to. And what's 
interesting about this is that you're not really limited to web safe fonts, which is which is uh, kind of a plus. Um, again, because this is just creating kind of ads, um, so you can you're not limited to that type of a thing. Okay. Um, so I'll do something a little more fancy. Um, and then, uh, let's see, adjust the size. You can actually click and drag to adjust sizes. Otherwise, you can um, um, uh, input a number. So um, it kind of maxed me out there um, at 96 as I was dragging. So um, uh, I can even just input, input it just numerically or whatnot. OK, now I'll go 150. No, that's too big. Let's go 120. That's better. OK. Um, and then uh, let's see, color. Uh, you know, of course, color here. Um, I'm going to do like this pink. All right. And then I'll say I'm good there. So, you know, you can kind of uh, uh, sort of customize this however you want. You can, uh, let's see, you can, you can do strokes as well. So, uh, wait, can you do strokes? I could. Mm, I guess not. Hmm. There must, must be a way. It's, it's not the best, you know, um, type isn't the greatest. You know, you can actually even, like, do something in Illustrator and, like, drag it in, too. So some really interesting type or vector graphics and drag it in as well. So um, this is kind of nice. It's very similar to InDesign in that you can, you can really um, uh, mix, mix up some different um, file types into this uh, piece. Um, into this uh, program, and again, you'll just go into your library here, and then and then click and drag your content out as you um, uh, bring it in, just like your links folder in InDesign. Similarly, um, okay. So if I were to actually um, control click this and then convert it to a symbol, instead of movie clip symbol under type, I'm going to hit button instead, and I'm just going to give this a name, and then now this created a button symbol, so you wouldn't know the difference, um, except when you click it now, um, you know, it's not selectable type. It's like moving around like an object, okay? Um, but the only difference then is when I double click into this, this is the difference. This is the difference between a movie clip symbol and a button symbol, is that a movie clip symbol um, <clears throat> would actually have just a normal timeline, like you normal, you know, you would on the, uh, in, the, uh, in the main area here, all your frames, etc. What the button symbol is going to do is actually provide an up, over, down, and hit state here. So just like you would with keyframes, you would go uh, to each one of these states and then change up the type here to um, uh, give this kind of object in action. Okay. So the over state um, essentially is is what is this going to look like when the cursor goes over it or hovers over it, just like a rollover button. So what you would do to define that is control click the over um, state here in the timeline, excuse me, and insert a keyframe. You insert a keyframe here, and now I'm going back and forth from the up and over. And in my over state, I'm just going to select my type, and then I'm just going to click on another color, let's say, to change my over state, like a darker purple. Okay. And then here, I can go back from my up to over, and I can see what's happening. What's going to be going on here when I go over this object, okay? My down state, uh, same idea. This is just, um, I'm going to insert a keyframe here. So this is just essentially what is it going to look like when I click, when, when I'm holding my clicker down on it. So I click and hold, right? Um, that's my down state. So, I, I mean, if I wanted to do something there, I would just... I would just change that color as well. So let's go like this, this other color, okay. All right, so we got a couple different um, looks here that's gonna, uh, that's gonna apply when uh, I, I am either uh, uh, away from it, over it, or clicking down on it. So that's the, the hit state I'm gonna go over, but uh, basically, I'm going to control click and insert a keyframe here. What the hit state does is it, uh, it tells um, uh, the, the, uh, the software basically what area is going to be clickable onto this. Okay, so like um, basically, if I do the exact same thing for the hit state as all these other states, then, then the, once I go between this letter F and the letter L here, and I go kind of, you see where like my cursor has this like cross that's coming up. 
those are like the areas that are active in the artwork. So that's the only part that's going to be clickable. This, this blank area out here is not going to be clickable if I go over it. So I'll show you what the, uh, that's all about here in a second, a little, little deeper. Uh, okay. Um, so let's test this out. All right. So here it is. You have um, this button here. It's constant, right? This is constantly, this is solid here throughout the animation. It's not getting masked or anything. It's on top of this mask layer. It's a constant arc, but it has action because um, it has that overstate, the click state, or I'm sorry, the down state, the overstate, and the out state. This is out, over, down. Okay, and you can see that the little Mickey Mouse finger there is just happening when it goes over like this actual letter form. Um, but between that letter form, it's, it's not becoming a button, so I can't click on this between the F and the L, okay? Um, so that's where that hit state comes in. So I'll close that uh, demo file out. And I'm gonna go back into this flower object, and on the hit state, I'm going to then just draw what area of this I want to be clickable. Now, watch when I jump out of it, I'm in the flower button now, I'll go back to scene one, which is my main timeline. That object that I drew disappears, and then I'll go to test my movie, and you can see that I can even click this thing way out here, because that hit state is, is reaching out here. That box was kind of larger, right? So it makes it easier for people to click on. So this is a button, and I can define what, you know, what area that button will take up, even if it's not the actual artwork with the hit state, which is useful, um, especially from a user standpoint, because you don't want to frustrate people by making them actually click like literal strokes on this type sometimes, just depending on how thin it is. You know, people like to use thin type and interfaces. The hit state helps um, in those uh, aspects. But let's say um, after the fact, I want to make this button be part of this mask. I'm just going to click and drag it underneath the mask. So you can see how it's kind of like this little button here. It kind of it's a little round circle. It's showing me where it's previewing where um, I'm dragging this thing in the layer ordering. So I'm going to drag it down under um, this mask layer. And then I'm going to turn on this lock. Okay, so if I unlock these objects, here as they're being masked, you can actually then preview to see what the object that's being masked is, is looking like in its full form, okay? So if I click the locks, then I'll be able to actually preview the mask to lock it, locking those objects up. Okay, so now flower is actually being masked. So I'll go again and control test. So again, I have my button active, it's clickable. Um, only when visible and it's being masked at the same time, okay? So now what we could do is actually make this button have some kind of actions, okay? Um, but what I want to do is actually go, um, I'll do that in a minute um, by creating another button, but what I'm going to do is actually have this movie um, stop at the end so it's not continuously rotating um, like it was earlier. So this is going to be an action script um, and this is a lot, e very easy to do. So if you want to apply a stop action to, to your animation, just go to whatever frame, whatever area on the timeline with, by dragging your playhead that you want this to stop. And you would click just any frame here within that um, playhead area that you want this video to stop at in the timeline. And so then you'll go to Window, and then Actions. And then so the Window Actions panel will open up this huge dialog box that you cannot make it any smaller than this. It's really obtrusive, um, but that's fine. So the only thing I'm going to do is actually click this, uh, this double caret area here, and it's called Code Snippets. So you just click that, and it's going to open up another window. Okay. Now this window will give you a folder that's called action script that you can drop down and then it'll give you another folder um, that's called timeline net well it'll give you a lot of folders here 
Okay, so all these folders can uh, contains action script that you can use uh, in this um, movie or interactive piece. So under timeline navigation, I'm going to find that there's a uh, code here called stop at this frame. So this is a, essentially your stop action. You'll just double click it and then it's going to populate that actions window that we had opened earlier uh, with some basically some kind of instructions on how to use this and the code itself which is this part here it's like that solid color uh, code so um, this basically says the animation uh, the animate timeline will stop slash pause at the frame where you can also where you oh wait it's, I'm covering it oh, okay yeah where you insert this code uh, it can also be used to stop pause the timeline of movie clips. So, okay, so it's basically saying if I wanted to stop a movie clip from animating, as you remember, um, before we had an animation within a movie clip that we went over last time, you can use the stop frame within that as well. Um, so long story short, we're just using this on the main timeline, and we just wanted to stop at that frame, okay? So close it up. Yeah, let me get my timeline looking better. Okay, so I'll close out all these windows. Usually every time I add action script, I close out all those huge windows because you can't make them any smaller. But here's the difference now. So you can see on my timeline uh, that um, Animate is going to create a layer called Actions. It automatically does that when I add any kind of action script code to this piece. And right over here, it's showing me where the action is by this tiny little letter A. Okay, so this denotes that I have action script on this frame at this point somewhere. Maybe it's an object, maybe it's not. I'm not really sure. What I can do is click on that and then open up my actions uh, panel and then I can see that I have a stop action right here. If I click off of it, it disappears. If I click back on that little letter A, it's reappearing. It's showing me that I have a stop action right here at this point. Also, here in the left corner, I can see I have actions at frame 30. As I build out more actions throughout the timeline, it will tell me where other, you know, what um, uh, frames I have other actions at and then I can actually click on the, the, you know, the list and see um, that code populating on the right side. So let's see this in action. So control test. And there it is. That is all it does. It just stops it at the end. It does not continue on. And that's exactly what I needed. So again, you'll have to just re redo it. I still have, you know, to... to re-see the animation or whatnot, but this is exactly what I'm, what I'm hoping for. Um, I still have my rollover. I'm working on my button in my uh, down state as well, and my hit state still reaching out here, which is good. All right, so now um, one more thing. Um, I want to demonstrate then um, a movie clip button. So I have a regular button, and I can apply um, any kind of action to this this uh, button here, um, but what I want to do is actually create a movie clip uh, button because I just want to show that you can, you know, do that and and apply action script to any kind of element as long as it's a button symbol or a movie clip symbol. So for this, I'm going to call this back. This is going to be a back button. It's going to be really simple. Uh, so what I'm going to do is the back button is actually going to just just pop up when the video ends here at frame 30. So um, right here I'm going to control click and then hit insert keyframe. Okay, and then on this empty keyframe here, you can see it's a clear circle. I'm going to take my playhead back over that area, click on that keyframe in my timeline, and then start dragging artwork out here. Um, using some type, okay? So um, here I'm going to just drag out a text box. I'm going to call it back. I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to go into my type, change this a little bit to uh, something less decorative. 
it's like uh, yeah there we go Franklin and then uh, make it smaller okay all right so that's good um, and then I'm going to uh, let's let's center that to make sure it's kind of centered. So I'll select this whole thing, um, center it. There we go. Uh, so now I can just drag it around in my. Let's see. Kind of center it under the flower text. Okay. So here, then at this point, I'm just going to um, control click it and I'm going to convert it to a symbol. Uh, this time, instead of button, I'll just do movie clip. Um, and then uh, I'm going to call it uh, back. Okay. So um, this is a movie clip symbol now. Um, what I want to do is actually have this uh, animate without really showing any kind of... Uh, uh, I'm just going to use the properties of uh, animate here to make this uh, animate. So let me show you how that works. So I'm going to save it really quick on my desktop. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is then double click on this movie clip symbol, okay, and again we're going to go into this movie clip symbols timeline. We're in the back movie clip symbol and then if I want to jump out of it I can click scene one, but I want to go back into the back movie clip symbol. Now I'm in this object's timeline. So what I want this object to do is actually for five frames I want to insert a frame for because for five frames I want this to be the color pink. On frame six I want to control click and insert a keyframe because on this sixth frame I want to actually make this change color uh, to like a something like this. Let's see how Obvious. Yeah, that's obvious enough. Okay, so then on six frame six, I want it to be like that, and then on frame ten, is that ten? Yeah, something like that. I'm gonna uh, uh, control click and insert a frame because I want the art to stay. So I want this animation, I want this timeline to play out over and over and over and over and over again to infinity um, in the background inside of this symbol, inside of this back button sim or uh, a back movie clip symbols. That's why they're calling it a movie clip because this object can have its own animation um, uh, within itself. So then I'll test this out. Okay, so the video plays out. It stops at the end after the mask kind of reveals everything and then you still see kind of this back button sort of going through its own animation process over and over and over again. Got my button symbol working. I've got my overstates going on. It's all good to go. All right, so that's a really simple animation without even applying any kind of um, tweens to it. It's just happening, okay? And that shows up on this one single frame. This is a one frame that this animation is taking up just because this is a movie clip symbol that has its own timeline within it. Okay, so um, at this point, I'm just going to click on this object and I'm going to apply a action to it. The action being, I want it to go to frame one and play. All right, that's all I want it to do. So I'm going to click on this object. First thing I have to do when I want to apply an action to an object on the stage. What we did before was we applied a stop action uh, to the entire timeline, frame 30. It was, it's not really like we're applying an action to an object. It's just the entire timeline is stopping, okay? So to apply an action to this object, I'm going to click the object. I'm going to go to Properties. Then, under Properties, you can see this object here called Instance Name. I just need to change that name, okay? Um, just to something unique to itself. So um, sometimes you can call it whatever you want as long as all the letters are connected together so btn1 letters and numbers are fine you can call it whatever you want um, usually I just do something random 
because the thing is is that if you name it the same thing as something else in the uh, in the piece, then it's going to start mixing things up and 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 failing. Um, so just give it a unique name. Okay, make sure it's clicked. Um, that was under the properties palette where we named it. Okay, and we're going to go to window and actions once again, just like we did before. Okay, uh, I still have my back button click. That's great. It's actually a movie clip symbol, not a button symbol, but um, that's what we're making it have an action like a button. So I'm clicking my code snippets uh, symbol up here, these two carrots facing each other. And under action script, uh, timeline navigation again, we're going to look at these options here. And there's click to go to next frame and stop, click to go to previous frame and stop, all these different ones. Um, and we're going to go, where is it? Click to go to frame and play. Okay, so click to go to frame and play. I'll double click that. All right. So this is saying now on frame 30, I have two actions here at this point. I have one action stating to stop. That stops the entire video. That's good. This next action here is um, go to frame and play. So this is all the code that makes this uh, happen. You can remember that BTN1 that we named that button? That's showing up here, so it automatically fills in the code, okay? And it gives you instructions up here in this is light gray. It's basically saying clicking on specified symbol instance moves the playhead to a specific time in the timeline, basically uh, blah, blah, blah. It gives you instructions. Replace the number five in the code below with a frame number you would like to uh, the playhead to move to once clicked. So I can look down here and it says go to frame and play and here's my number five. I'm just changing that number to whatever frame I want this button to go to once clicked. All right. Um, all this other stuff in the code here, not that big of a deal. It's just this is Action Script 2.0 code. It adds an event listener, mouse click event, blah, blah, blah. The only thing you really need to worry about is making sure that this name is identical to the object on the stage that you named um, that you want your action to, and that go to play um, is here, and then you just put the frame that you want. You want to replace the frame 5. I'm not sure why they default to frame 5, um, but you just want to change that frame number to the uh, frame number that you want the object to go to. So once that's changed, I can close this out. No saving involved here. All right, and then I'm just going to go to Control Test. OK, my button comes up. It's got that background animation happening. And then it goes to frame 1, plays. And then remember, frame 30, it stops. So now I have a constant flow here. One disadvantage to um, movie clip symbols being interactive objects is that I don't have that, that sweet Mickey Mouse finger happening when I go over this back button like you typically would see in like a website or something. That's something to consider. So um, usually if it's a movie clip symbol that has an action to it, I give some kind of reference to tell the user what to do with this thing, okay? so. Um, uh, maybe typically to make it uh, dummy proof, I'd say like click to go back or click to replay or something like that. Um, since that little Mickey Mouse hand isn't showing up any, uh, at that point, okay. Let's say um, you see how I'm kind of like losing the, um, I can't click on like this empty gap in between. No big deal. I can actually go onto this object. Um, and uh, what I'll do is, um, let's say, I'll jump into the symbol. And I'll create a new layer over it. And then I'll just call it, oh, yeah, here we go. Hit, hit layer. Uh, so this layer, um, I'm just going to put a piece of art here and convert it to a symbol and make it transparent so I can make the hit state just kind of, um, uh, just ad hoc here. So here's the object, the hit layer object. I'm going to go and change its alpha under color effect to z nothing, so it's invisible. Okay, and then test it. 
Yes, yeah, so now I have a little bit more, you know, um, wiggle room to kind of click this, click this thing. I don't even have to get it exactly on the on the button. So it's kind of a workaround if you want to create your own hit state. Just jump into the movie clip symbol and create a hit layer and make it a movie clips or uh, and a movie clip symbol in and of itself, and then just um, make it invisible. So the area of the clickability or the click area of that object is, is larger than just those tiny little letters, okay? That's a workaround, um, and it could be useful in the future, so. All right, okay, any questions or anything at this point? I'm gonna um, upload this just as soon as I can, just so you have a